There is only one name. Yes, Lord. There is only one name. The power to save. Thank you, Jesus. The power to save. Help me sing. There is only one name. Yes, Lord, say. There is only one name. The power to save. The power to save. Yes, come on, do it again. <laughs> there is only one name, say. There is only one name. Say. There is only one name. The power to save. Save. Come on, sing this with me. Say, our God, our God is, champion. is champion. He reigns. Hallelujah. He reigns forevermore. Forevermore. Come on, sing it real big. Help me. Say, our God. Champion, he reigned yes. forevermore. Forevermore. Oh, come on, let's move on. Every knee shall bow down. Let me hear your color say. Every knee will bow down. Every tongue say. Every tongue will confess. That Jesus Christ. You are Lord. You are Lord. Come on, do that again, would you? Say every knee shall bow down. Say it. Every knee will bow down. Every tongue confesses. Every tongue will confess. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. shift now. We call in on a miracle from God right now. Come on. If you open up your mouth, there's a shifting right now. It's taking place. Come on. Just tell the Lord you need him. Tell the Lord you love him. Tell the Lord to have his way in this place. Hey! Atmosphere shift now. Chains be broken. Break Holy 
together. Open up those mouths and say atmosphere say Talk to him Yes Break out Holy Spirit We need you, we need you Listen, I'm going to let the song go because we're under our time. But I got to admonish you. <laughs> These songs are not just songs. Uh, listen to the words. We're prophesying to the atmosphere. We want the atmosphere to shift. It has to be conducent for the word. Now, if you are standing in agreement with me, I want you to open up your mouth. I want you to hold back nothing. And I want you to give God everything because there's about to be a shift in the atmosphere. There's about to be a shift not only in the sanctuary, but there's about to be a shift in your homes. Hallelujah. Open up your mouths and begin to speak well. Open up your mouths and begin to fill this place. Hallelujah. He's shifting the atmosphere as you begin to say wonderful of him. He's shifting the atmosphere as you begin to open up your mouth and speak well of him. He's shifting it. Hey! Let him shift it in your homes. Let him shift it in your life. Open your mouth, Zion. Open your mouth. Give it to him this morning. Hey! Hey, hey, hey. We go Come down Heaven Our God Is champion He reigns Forevermore, we love you, Jesus. Forevermore, one voice, and if we're gonna leave it alone, one voice, everybody sing. Our God, God is champion. Is champion. He reigns. He reigns. Forevermore. and give him what's due him this blessed morning. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him some praise. When you hear the song that says our God is a champion, it really says to us that he has had adversity. He has had opponents. He has had to fight some things for you. He's had to come against some adversaries for you. And you know what? Every adversary, every time he had to come against something, guess what? He won. He is our champion. Can we praise the 
champion today. He is our champion. He's never lost a battle. If you have an issue today, he will fight for you. Hallelujah. We want to welcome the streaming Hallelujah. congregation today. Let's give our streaming congregation a hand. God bless you as you enter into the joy of the Lord. Father, we thank you for the worship that's gone on before you, God. We hope that it comes to you as a sweet smell to your nostril as we continue to give you praise, glory, and honor. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. And so we honor God for being here today. We thank God for his presence here, blessing his holy name. Thank God for each of you today that would come and sacrifice before the Lord. We honor the King of Kings. We honor the champion. The champion today. The champion is here today. The champion is here today. The champion, his name is Jesus. He deserves the praise today. All hail King Jesus. All hail Emmanuel. Hallelujah! The champion is here today. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah! So we praise God again for his goodness today. Thank him for his love. Hallelujah! We praise his name today. He deserves the praise. Go ahead and praise him. He deserves the praise. Hallelujah. He is worth the praise today. All hail King Jesus. Hallelujah. One more time, put your hands together for the Lord. Again, this is a time we now get to all share it again. Come on, it's giving time. It's giving time. Put your hands together. The question was asked, what shall I render unto him? Every time you get a chance to give, you should ask yourself that question. What shall I render unto him? And when you think about the question, there should be some reflections. Because this is just not a time where it's a ritual time where we reach into our pockets and we pull out our checkbooks, our debit accounts. But this is a time that we, we ponder, what shall I render unto him for all that he has done for us. Uh, to be truthful about it, we fall short. We will come up short. But like David, let's try. I will bless the Lord. I'm going to figure out a way I'm going to give to the Lord. And then he gives us, he tells us what he would want us to do. He said, bring your tithe and offering into the house. So as you're preparing your offering, as you know, we're giving online. It should be coming up really soon for our streaming audience. This is a ministry to sow into. If you really want to put yourself in a position where you can get to know God, and you really want to know how you can challenge yourself, is that, Lord, I want to know you like Moses declared, then, then giving is a way that you can do that. Because you put yourself in a position and say, Lord, I'm going to lean on you for all the things I need. So here's what I have. I'm giving this to you, God, because I'm trusting in you. So let us stand to our feet as we give to the Lord this morning, this afternoon. And so, Lord, we thank you for those who are streaming, those that are here, that are prepared 
with our tithe and our offerings, God. We pray, God, that you will look at each of them, God, and you know the hearts already, and that you know the needs. You know what they stand in need of, both naturally, spiritually, physically. You know all things, and so the Lord, today we turn those things to you, over to you, and we give us unto you, Father. And so we thank you, and we bless you for this time of giving. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank God for your ministry. Hallelujah. So we're excited because the Lord has allowed us to have with us today to share in the preachment of his word, uh, one of his chore servants. Thank God that we have been able to not have a stranger to share but this individual has grown up in front of us and we have certainly been able to see the hands of the Lord upon his life. So I'm just excited what God is not only doing, but what God is going to do through him and for him. I just want to tag on and be a part of that. Are you excited for the word this morning? Hallelujah. Rest on your feet as we celebrate and we honor God for this servant that he has given unto us. And we thank God for his life and his ministry. Praise God for him and all that he is doing. Again, put your hands together and show God how much we appreciate Pastor Michael J. Rogers Jr. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Although, I really do appreciate the hand claps. I really do. It makes me feel special. It makes me feel like family. But before we go forward, let me ask you this. How would you posture yourself if you knew the one who can provide change for your situation was here? Right? How, not, not, not physically, but mentally. How would you posture yourself if you know the one who can provide uh, relief for your situation is here? How would you posture yourself? Right? So again, although I appreciate the hand claps, let us take this moment to lift our hands and say thank you to the one. Say thank you to the one who can bring change to you. Understand where you are right now. The one who can save yourself, he's here. He is here. He is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 He's here. He's here. I want to jump right into the word. We don't have long, and I don't want to keep you here any longer than you need to be. But first, before we go any further, I want to say thank you to our pastor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes life only brings you to the point of fully appreciating somebody in their death, right? It takes death to somehow fully makes us to appreciate someone's life, someone's journey, someone's sacrifice, because we get, to, we get the, the joy of seeing this person every Sunday, every Wednesday, and we become used to each other. Just like in a relationship, and those who are married for five years or more, matter of fact, forget that, those who are married, period, you become used to your spouse. I promise you, you are not the same person you, you was when, when they said, will you marry me, and you said, I do. You change, you become used to them, because again, for the last some odd years, day in, day out, here they are. But you, but you really fully get to really appreciate your spouse, right? When, when somebody becomes a widow. And it's the hardest thing to do. It's the hardest thing to do. I've seen one of our bishops in the church, he's, he was married for 60 something years and I seen his wife pass and it broke my heart because I can only imagine what life may be like for him now, right? Every day you wake up to see this person and now all of a sudden one day they're not there. So before we have to experience that, let us say, Pastor, in your absence, we appreciate you. We thank you for your sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's jump right into the, to the word. Today, I will be reading from Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel. We're going to get there, but let me give you some backstory. 
Because if I don't, we're going to jump right into celebration, not knowing what we're celebrating. Uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes one of the, the biggest celebrations in my life is when I had to go through, yeah. right? If, if I never had to go through in life, I wouldn't know how to celebrate. Somebody, I once heard somebody say that you can't have sunshine without rain, so now let me show you the rain real quick. At this point in Ezekiel, he has been carried off into slavery or exile by the first attack of the Babylonian Empire. This book that I'm about to read begins five years after exile has taken place. Ezekiel finds himself, as we all do, at, at, at a time of our lives, at 30 years old, trying to review. Because if he was still in Jerusalem, this would have been a time where he would have been ordained an elder in the church. But now at 30 years old, as he's starting to go through his life, he doesn't see what he planned. At 30 years old, he's having a midlife crisis saying, Lord, how could I be that here? How could I be what you called me to be here in slavery? How? And I can imagine how Ezekiel felt. When I was sick, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And the doctor said, Mike, as we all know the story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. He says, Mike, I don't know what to tell you, but there is nothing else we can do. Yo, I am now faced with life or death. Yeah, the church thing sound good when you living and you healthy. It sound real good to say, look, put your trust in the Lord. But when death is knocking at your door, you might get a little shaky. You may get a little shaky. So at this moment, an image appears to Ezekiel. I mean, it was an image. It, the image had four faces, wings. It's going down. 30 years old. So, come on, Siri. <laughs> the Hebrew word for glory is kavod, meaning the physical appearance of God, right? So put you in mind of what happened at Mount Sinai, right? The physical appearance of God, what happened at, at, at the covenant, right? It was the manifestation of God. So the shocking part for Ezekiel was, what is the spirit of God doing here? Mm. What is the spirit of God doing here where I am? And if I could be real with you for a moment, sometimes I had to ask myself that. As I'm trying to do me, why is the spirit of God here? Lord, listen, I'm, I'm going to be real right now. I know the way I should take, but right now I'm choosing not to. Is there some real people in here tonight? I know what I ought to do, Lord. I heard you clearly in my good ear. But in this moment, I'm going to decide to do me. The Bible says, in heaven, you're there, right? And if I go to hell, you're there also with me. So my question to you on today, where are you at where you think that the Lord can't find you? Where are you at right now where you think that the Lord isn't there? Because I promise you, in your mess and, and whatever your issue may be, because we all got them, don't leave me under the bus. The Lord is saying, I am there, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You're going to find God, the glory of God, in the most unconventional places because we're called to do unconventional things. Mm. The Lord begins to talk with Ezekiel, excuse me, causing him to prophesy to Israel. The Lord tells Ezekiel, I am sending you to the Israelites even though they are a stubborn and rebellious people. Mm. He says, but do not be afraid. Don't worry, because I am with you. Now, here we go. The Lord repeated rebellion seven times in chapter 2, and it's only nine verses. All right? So I'm the type of person, when I read the word, no matter what I'm reading, no matter if, if the people are rebellious or if the people are on one accord, I try to find myself. Because I promise you, this scripture is it about, he's he talking about us. Rebellious, somebody is saying, Mike, I'm not rebellious. Oh, you're not, right? And I think sometimes we have a false sense of what rebellion means. It doesn't necessarily mean we worship idols and false gods. Rebellion is doing anything that God told you to do, and you're not doing it. All right. Okay. All right, Pastor Mike, it's not me. Have you ever, have you ever refused the calling of God in your life? Matter of fact, let's get real. Raise your hand. Okay. All right. We're getting real today. Have you ever trusted in yourself rather than you trust in God? Okay, we're getting, we getting real today, y'all. See, and, and this is the thing. When you get real, this is, when healing can, this is when healing can take place. Because the worst person to deceive is yourself. And you keep saying, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then when you leave here, you in the car crying. 
then when you leave here and you're by yourself, you're really going through. God, if we can't share our scars with one another, then what can we do? We just don't come here to hear a word and that's it. No, we come to feel each other's pain because that's how we're going to get over it. That's how we're going to get over it. That's how we're going to get over it. Hallelujah. Is unforgiving an issue? Mm. And now let me tell you the thing about unforgiving, unforgiveness. It's like cancer. And I hate to use that analogy, but I have to use it. Because if you don't get it treated, it'll kill you. If you don't get it treated, you'll start to see cancer spread, right? Your ca cancer can start in, in the chest, end up somewhere else. It can spread, and that's what unforgiveness does. And no matter who it is, and real quick, there's not too many young people in here, but I'm talking to you for the ones who are in here. Matter of fact, I'm talking to everybody because at some point, we all have mother and daddy issues, right? And that unforgiveness, it spills over to relationships, right? Every child needs their father, and every child needs their mother. If you don't believe that, then there's something wrong with you, right? But in that unforgiveness, find in yourself to forgive a person because I promise you, you'll be surprised. That, that ticket to, to the next could be hinged upon you forgiving somebody else. And I promise you, one of the greatest things I've learned about forgiveness, and I know it sounds corny, it sounds so cliche, but forgiveness is really for you, right? I promise you. I didn't had some people in my life I didn't want to forgive y'all, and I, I was willing to die with it. I was willing to say, Lord, if it's going to be a conversation that me and you got to have, so be it. So be it, because I'm not going to forgive. And then I promise y'all, I don't know how it happened, but it happened. The Lord oppressed upon my heart to forgive, and it was like one of the most releasing things for me. Forgive, forgive, forgive. The Lord shows Ezekiel all these things that's about to happen in Israel, but like us, we still don't listen. So the Lord promised judgment. But in the midst of judgment, in verse 11, he says things like, I'm going to bring you back, right? I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to give you. I'm going to put a new spirit in you. Fast forward all the way to chapter 33. Still don't listen. The whole city falls, all right? Verse 36 says, therefore, say to the Israelites, this is what the sovereign Lord says. It is not for your sake, people of Israel, that I'm going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name. God is saving us for his name's sake. All right? It's not going to matter how many times we meet in this place. It's not going to matter how many times we fast. Even though all this stuff is phenomenal, the next move of God is going to happen because of his name's sake. Because I don't know about you, but I, I haven't put in enough man hours to be a, a recipient of what the Lord has done for me. I haven't said thank you enough for me to breathe this air that I'm breathing right now. I haven't said thank you enough for my, to, to see my family doing well off right now. I haven't done that. As I'm speaking about my, about my family, shout out to my family, they're not here right now. We just got a puppy and uh, <laughs> they decided to be at home with him. Right now he can't stay by himself. So family, I love you so much and thank you for allowing me to be here with the people of God. Again, God is rescuing us, not because of what we've done, but for his namesake. Look around real quick. You see that wall? You see that wall? You see that TV? You see that TV? Like two years ago, year and a half even, none of this stuff was, it wasn't ours, <laughs> all right? We didn't, we didn't own this church. And I don't know if you guys all know the story, but I'm about to put our business out. Those who are streaming, you just became family. So, yo, let me put our business out there, y'all. Y'all know what this building was going for? It was going for two point something million dollars, y'all. Huh? Right? Yeah, y'all know where we came from, 508. This building was going for two point something million dollars. The Lord spoke to the pastor and said, look, put on 1.2. Mm, we still talking big numbers, but put on 1.2. Half, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I was doubtful. Cause, and this is the thing about it. The Lord had to show me this place. I was, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real with y'all. I was in pastors there saying, nah, dad, this not it. Nah, this, this is not it. This ain't the one, because remember what you said, the Lord told us to build in Portsmouth. Weak faith. Not wrong faith, but weak faith. Y'all yeah. was with me on Wednesday? Good, weak faith. Nah, this, this is not it. I know it's going to be something bigger, but now the Lord got to deal with me. You're not the pastor of this church. No matter how far you think you have matriculated in the process of this thing called church, you are not the head. You are not the head. No matter how grown you think you've become in your life, you are not the head of your life. And that's where we go wrong because we want to control the situation. Yeah. Right? Well, Lord, if I do this, then you must do that. Says who? Right. Right. 
says who? So again, God gave us this place. Let me go back to the story because it's a good story to tell. That's not it. We meet six o'clock prayer. All right, I'm a, I, again, you my dog, so I'm gonna roll with you. If, if you say, look, the order from God is to march off this cliff, I'm, let, let us go. Let us go, and I promise you, somebody right here is saying, Mike, you're tripping, but that's the problem. You're not obedient. You're not submissive to the ministry yet, right? You gotta be, yo, yo, you gotta be all in. This, this ain't the place that you come here to have an idea on how things ought to run. Nobody asks for the opinion. Lord, what did you say do? So we gonna do, and we gonna get there, and we gonna get there. But again, suffice it to say as I fast forward along, God gave us this building. God's word will not return void. It will accomplish what it has desired to achieve the purpose for which he has sent it. He is doing it for his name. Now we get to our text. The Lord told Ezekiel he's putting it back together again. <clears throat> the text reads Ezekiel 37. Oh, I got this voice thing. I need all that. Tell me again. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Pray for me, saints. Pray for me, saints. What are we doing here? Pray for me. Y'all see what's going on? Pray for me. Pray for me. And I'm not joking with y'all. <coughs> Hello? Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 13. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry, he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the words of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Hallelujah to these bones. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied it as I was commanded and I was prophesying. There was a noise, a rattling sound and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man that say it. This is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from our four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied it as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up to their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them that this is the sovereign Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you, settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it, declares the Lord. Amen. The word of the Lord is blessed. Father God, in this moment, let your word pierce and let your love heal. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For the next 15 minutes or less, I will be ministering from the topic of my bones, my bones. Take it personal. I'm not talking to them, I'm talking to you, all right? Everybody take it personal, my bones, right? See your own life in this moment. Mm. At this moment, since the inception of his ministry, Ezekiel's ministry, he has been tasked with being the bearer of bad news, right? He had a very intense journey since day one. And real quick, while we're talking about this, let us not be in a hurry to obtain a title, right? Because the moment you do, whether you're ready for it or not, the enemy, he's about to throw everything at you, right? And sometimes people get out there and they, some, and I never understood it, but they see this part as being like the apex in Jesus. So like if you're a preacher, you're like the man, but I promise you, in the kingdom, those who are greatest among us, serve. So if you want to be great, if you want to aspire to be something, go holler at Ray Hall. He's the, he's the, the groundskeeper. Holler at him. Because I promise you this, if you work with Ray Hall, watch the next time we see you, watch God exalt you. And y'all think I'm playing. 
check, yo, I done seen Ray Hall, who's the groundskeeper. I remember when he didn't have a business, right? I remember when he, he, he didn't call his groundkeeping anything. A simple conversation started. Again, let, let those, the greatest among you serve. Ray now has a carpet cleaning business. <laughs> Give it up for the man. <coughs> Ray also has a cleaning business. He does commercial and residential. But you see what I'm saying here? You want to preach? I preach, what, five times a year? Ray make money every day. <laughs> Ray make money every day. Let the greatest among you serve. So here we are. Ezekiel has experienced the Lord wipe out. And now he is, he is experiencing watching the Lord make new. The Bible says that he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. Let me paint the picture for image sake so we can really understand what's going on. The valley is always a depressed land. So, you know, we, we always hear you have hills and you have valleys. So imagine these beautiful hills, these joyous moments. Then you have these valleys that are in the middle of hills that look like death. Y'all know them times when we come to church on a Sunday, we have one of them phenomenal services, and in your mind, you be like, yup, I'm never going back to the old me again. And then come Monday, you go right back to the old you again. Valleys, valleys. So the Lord brings him to a, a valley, and all he sees is dried up bones. All he sees everywhere he looked is very dried up bones, so many that he doesn't see the floor. Not just bones, but very dry bones, indicating that what we're looking at has been dead a very long time. All right? And, and moreover, imagine again, you got to put yourself in their culture, Ezekiel. When a person dies, ASAP, they're they getting buried because it is, it is disgraceful to keep a body just being out in the open for people to look at. What we do, nah, in their culture, that's disgraceful. How do you do that? Right? So now he's looking at all of these bones saying, what did this person do not to, what did they do not to get buried? Like, Lord, what do you have me looking at? We just see bones and think, oh, they're just bones, huh? No, what did, this, what did all of these people do not to get buried? So again, it, 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 it's really messing with them right now, all right? And bones, whenever you see bones, it means that something was living and is now gone. And sometimes in life, y'all, we put more emphasis on something that we thought was in our life living, but guess what, when it died, it left no bones. For example, all right, for example, like just like that empty relationship, right? Before my wife, I had a girlfriend. <laughs> uh oh, y'all y'all too quiet on me. Y'all too quiet on me. Y'all on date, y'all ain't gonna do that to me. Y'all ain't gonna do that to me. But before I had a wife, I had a girlfriend, right? And that particular girlfriend, she's not here today because I have a wife. But because she really never lived in my life, there's no existence of her. There's no bones in my life that ever represented that situation. So I'm not saying that your situation never took place. I'm just saying if there are no bones in front of you, then forget about it. Then forget about it, <clears throat> right? So in this moment, let's address those bones that we do see, right? Let us address those dead things in our life that we do see, right? All right. Matter of fact, let's do this. Let's 2021 it. Okay, forget going to the valley, you see bones. Let's 2021 20, it. The Lord takes you to a cemetery. Okay, he takes you back, he takes you forth. You're seeing all these headstones, all this dead stuff around us. Let's 2021 20, it. What dead ideas do you have in your cemetery? Hmm? What dead gifts do you have in your cemetery? Hmm? Don't enjoy the message, but see yourself in it. What dead gifts do you see? What does that dead marriage look like in your cemetery? What does that dead job look like? More importantly, what does that dead mind in you look like right now? Somebody is facing something right now and you think that this is it. You just came to church just to give it a shot. But I promise you in this moment, something that, that you didn't really count on happening that God was going not even just be here, he was going to beat you here. And he came ready. He came ready for you to give it to him. So the question here right now, at, with 12 minutes left into the message, will you give it to him? Because if not, you're going to leave out here the same way you came. I don't know about y'all, but I'm trying to be as free as I've ever been today. All right? 
I told one of my buddies who I work with, man, look, I, <laughs> no lie, y'all, my first business is a courier service, and I'm about to give it all up, right? I'm about to sell it, I'm about to give it all up to my driver so they can go and be, and be prosperous. But I told my buddy, at this stage of my life, my time costs different, right? My time costs more now, because now I have been given more responsibility, so my time costs more, so I refuse to have empty relationships. I'm not calling nobody no more who all I ever do is pour out. Nah, you gotta pour into me. Amen. Amen. Because if you can't help me build, then all you're gonna do is take away. Yeah. And in this season in my life, I don't have much to be taken away. Yeah. I had to fight for everything I got, and if I decide to give it to you, appreciate it. Yeah. Amen. Value your time, value who you are. It's only one of you, but it's many of them. Uh -huh. Right? It's only one of you. Amen. Amen. Verse 3, he asked, son of man, can these bones live? Mm, can they live? They say one of the richest places in the world is the cemetery. Right? And we're going to come back to that. The B-Clause said, I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. And Ezekiel, in my book, was one of the wisest men. That, just off that verse alone, Lord, you know. Because now what if Ezekiel would have jammed himself up and be like, nah, Lord, they done. It's over. Because I promise you, if I can just go back to that dead thing in my life, I never thought I would ever revisit it. Like forgiveness. I told y'all my mind was already made up. If, if I got to have this tough conversation with the Lord, I was going to have it. But can these dry bones live? And Ezekiel said, Lord, you know, because the truth of the matter, y'all, to answer those questions, you're going to have to seek the Lord. Ask, come on, y'all, we being real, we family. Amen. Streaming, we family now. I told y'all this story about my life before, three months into my marriage, I'm, yo, I'm woe for the divorce. I'm like, pastor, I made the wrong decision. I think I missed God on this one. I think I missed God on this one. He says, son, you better go pray. Only God knows the answer, so I say, Lord, only you know. Yeah. Only you know, and if you fast forward, coming up on nine years, obviously he knew. Obviously, he knew. <coughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Verse 4 says, Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Say what the Lord says, and you will see what the Lord sees. And that's the thing, y'all. The Lord tells us that we're above only, so why are we always beneath? Some, there has to be a miscommunication somewhere. Real quick, just to make sure I'm in the right place, do we believe what the Bible says? Show of hands. So when we don't see what the Bible says, what does that mean? Simple, it's, a, it's, a, it's obviously something is wrong, right? Right, good, I just wanna make sure that I wasn't tripping and I wasn't losing my mind. So again, we gotta start saying and seeing how the Lord sees us. What you say, Lord, I am more than a conqueror, All right? So, so you start to see yourself conquering and you gotta talk spicy with it, y'all. Every time you have a battle, talk your talk. Say, look, enemy, I told you, right? Your head will be under my heel. You got to start talking back to him, right? Like I, I said this on Wednesday. I'm tired of always playing defense, Ma. Bro, defense is cool, but you got to score at some point. Bro, I'm 36 years old. It's time for me to start scoring. I don't know how old you are. Y'all don't got to tell me, all right? But it's time for us all to really start scoring, right? At one point, I love basketball, and I promise you, at the height of it, you got no choice but to start talking trash. And I'm from Brooklyn, so that's what we do. <laughs> Mitch, 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 Elgin, you know how we do. You know how we do. If I hit you with the boom bow, oh, I got you, you slow, your mother. You know what I mean? <laughs> your, your mother. <laughs> Absolutely, but that's what we need to start doing. Every time we have a victory, start telling me the enemy to go back to where he came from. I don't know who he thought he was to mess with you. And that's the thing about it, y'all. If he could have killed us, he would have by now. If he could have destroyed us, he would have by now. So obviously he can't because the Lord has us covered. Hallelujah. 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 You will start seeing yourself better. <clears throat> I keep praying for me. I keep praying for my voice. Can I get an amen? Amen. <clears throat> amen. 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 Verse 5 says, this is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. 
I will make breath into you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. What bones are you looking at right now? Remember I told you to take inventory on those bones in your life? What bones are you looking at right now? What was living in your life and has died? Only things that live leave bones. Hallelujah. And this is going to set someone free right now. All right? You're here for such a time as this, right here, right now, hearing this message. I could have preached a thousand and one messages, but this is the message we're on right now. All right? What died because we were rebellious? Be real with yourself. What died because you didn't want to listen? <clears throat> what died, both of my hands is up right now, because we was inconsistent. Y'all, God gave us the million dollar idea, but I guarantee you no one, no one pursued it. Y'all, here y'all go. I'm going to give y'all this one for free. All right? Thank you, Mr. Soundman. I'm going to give y'all this one for free. Y'all want, to be, y'all want a million dollar idea? Here you go. And I'm going to give it to you. My sister's going to be mad. T, I'm going to give it to him. T, I'm going to give it to him. All right, here we go. Y'all know how we have washers and dryers and somehow clothes always, I'm not, I got to give it to them. And clothes always spill even to the side or behind. Y'all know, come, yeah. y'all don't do no laundry. Who do laundry? Pam, you do laundry? So you know, clothes always going to the side or whatever. So my idea was to, was to create a little mesh piece that you can put on the sides of your washing machine so now the sock won't fall over, it'll just fall on the mesh. So here we go, saints. Again, we are family, so somebody take it, right? Let's put it together. Yeah, let's put it together. But again, inconsistency. Inconsistency. But yet, here I am, weak faith, not wrong faith, but weak faith. Lord, help me, to, help me, Lord. Send me some money, Lord. Lord, help me, Lord. Get this help. Lord, help. What are we praying about? I gave you the idea, right? Be consistent and watch the salvation of the Lord come through for you. It's a good idea, right? Good idea. Good idea. I know it is. I know it is. Guys, that's, that's the one. 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 <laughs> Verse 7 says, so I prophesied it, and I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Mm. Those who seek, right, the key to, be- to better living... Those who want to know, look, how do I become a millionaire or how do I become successful? I'm about to give you the answer right now. Seven says, so I prophesied it as I was commanded, right? (laughs) If you're not doing what the Lord commands, you will never have success. All right. This is what I liken it to all the time. Because one person, whoever preached says, "You, you know, your life could never be great without God. That's not true, right? But hear me out on this. Hear me out. Hear me out. I know people who have been married for 89 years don't believe in God. They live a great marriage. Their marriage is phenomenal, right? But those with God, you guys, we get to experience something just a little bit different. Imagine if I could compare McDonald's real quick, the Big Mac. Guys, I like the Big Mac, especially when it's fresh. I like my fresh. Give me the fresh fries, a little bit of salt. I got a thing for Big Macs. But it's this restaurant in town center, it's called Shake Shack. Yeah. Right? And I can get the same burger at Shake Shack, and I can get the same burger at McDonald's. But if you've ever been to Shake Shack, you understand that McDonald's don't compare. Although McDonald's has been here for hundreds and something years. But with God, Shake Shack? Yo, you get that, that succulent burger, that, ooh, ooh, let me get that. <laughs> You get that burger, but, but this is what I'm saying. You can have life, but to have it more abundantly, it got to come through God. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of just, ex- I'm tired of just existing. Yeah. Right? I want to thrive. I want every time I walk into a room, I want the room to fill me. Yeah. That's what I want. I want to be an atmosphere changer. I'm tired of just saying, yeah, the Lord is good. No, let me show you how good he is. That's the life that I want. That's the life that I want, right? God can resurrect those dead bones, but the breath is sold separately. 
right? God can give you that job, but to keep that job, it's going to require a little bit more work, and that's sold separately. Mm -hmm. God will give you the desires of your heart, but now you got to keep it. Mm -hmm. Everybody want that big house, big car. Don't nobody ever think about how much that oil change costs. Come on, Range Rover. Come on, Range Rover. I'm going to tell you now, I had a Nissan Maxima and I had a Lexus before. It's a difference in price. My Nissan Maxima, I was getting oil changes for the 40, $40 for the 40 piece. My Lexus, that's $150 for the oil change. Do we, do we know what we want? Do we understand that for everything we have, something has to die? Uh, Mike, you talking too heavy. What you mean something got to die? I just want to wake up from my house and come to church. You don't think that somebody had to die for that to happen? Let me tell you a little story. Over 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus Christ. Over 2,000 years ago, a man gave his life for you, for you and I, so we can live. Let me fast forward. We got 37 seconds left, y'all. And hold me to it. Hold me to it. <laughs> Verse 9, prophesy, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breathe from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied it as he commanded me and breath into them and they, set, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Prophesy breath to your own bones. In this moment, say within yourself, breath to my bones. There's breath to every dead situation in my life. We have come to the point, y'all, where we got to write that book, right? We have come to the point where we got to finish that class that we've been holding off. We, we have come to the point where we got to start that business. And I'm going to tell you why. Everything that you ever see, you know how like we have two versions of ourselves. You know, we look in the mirror, we say, all right, this is my life, but I see myself here. It's time to start being that other person, right? This is not a time, we don't, have, we don't have the luxury of holding it off no more. COVID showed you that. You don't think that everybody who passed on COVID had a dream? You don't think that everybody who passed on COVID said, you know what, I'm gonna get to that one day? What? You don't think that? You don't think that everybody who passed thinks how we think? Oh, I'm gonna go after this, I'm gonna go get something to eat. Who says that you gonna make it from here to your car? Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Make a declaration right now and determine right now that the rest of 2021, we're going to finish strong. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to finish strong. 2021, my time is up. Here we go. Here we go. Let's fast forward. Let's fast forward. This is, <laughs> this is what the, the sovereign Lord says. My people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that the Lord has spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. I know you've been feeling buried by life, but I once heard the pastors, our pastors say that we're not buried, we're planted, <laughs> right? We're, we're, we're planted, hallelujah. And the Lord says that he is now bringing, bringing us back to the land we lost. Sometimes, y'all, as I conclude, the Lord is going to bring you back to that place of your defeat. We don't, we don't, we don't want to go back. We don't want to go back. Can I get one more prayer as I go home? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Sometimes we don't want to go back. For me, I had to go back to the Virginia Oncology Center. That's why I had to go back. Associates. That's why I had to go back to the place where they told me, Mike, there's nothing we can do for you. Your blood is all messed up. My counts was all messed up. Some things, my count should have been in the hundreds. Mine was like 14. Right? I'm always cold. Like, my bones were hurt from the inside out. Right? But I had to go back there for them to say, Mike, you know what? You no longer have to come back here again. And while, right, amen, amen, you can clap. You can clap. But while I'm on it right now, the Lord is speaking. And right now, I pray for everybody who has a blood disease. I pray for everybody who has issues with their bones. From the marrow on out, I pray healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for every single blood cell to be regulated, Lord, to normal, Lord. Father, you know all things. You know all things. 
And as we conclude, I would be remiss not to offer Jesus to somebody. No matter where you are in your relationship, slip your hand up if you want prayer. Say, Lord, help to help your bones, to help your unbelief. If you ever suffer with unbelief, slip your hand up real quick. And I promise you there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you can't accept it, you will never be healed from it. If you ever had any issues, in fact, raise your hand. If you just need prayer, Lord, just help me in general. Yes, yes, and it's okay to be free. It's okay to want prayer. Let the, let the greatest among you want prayer. I need prayer. So, Father God, in this moment, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing. Thank you for information, Lord. Thank you for a new life, Lord. God, what we see, we know it can be resurrected again, Lord, if we trust you. And Father God, we put our trust in you. And Lord, and if you guys don't even know the Lord, just repeat after me, and I, I promise you I can introduce you right now. As I say all the time, we are ushers in the kingdom saying right this way. First, acknowledge that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And then repent. And no matter where you are, you find yourself a Bible-believing church. You go get baptized so now the world can see that you're his. Hallelujah. 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 In this moment, let us sow into our bones, into our dry bones. Let us sow into the fruitfulness of our dry bones. I promise you, the moment when you see those dry bones come to life, it'll blow your mind. But it's a process to get there. And if you don't see it, you'll never see it. If you don't believe it, you'll never see it. At some point, you gotta take that step and just jump. Just jump. The greatest moments in my life came from when I jumped. I was tired of just living life regular and I jump so in this moment jump on your leisure when you get home you can do it now whenever you can sow a seed sow a ten dollar seed I'm gonna sow a hundred give a tenth of what I obey sacrifice obedience is better than sacrifice sow with me a ten dollar seed we're gonna sow into these bones amen amen listen I thank everybody for praying for my voice on today right I know I'm gonna walk out of here healed so before the last person leaves, please come talk to me. Because I'm really believing. I'm believing right now and I'm sowing it to my dry bones. I didn't wake up with a sore voice. It just got sore as I was sitting there. Right? But guess what? Like I said, I'm going to believe God for these dry bones. And I'm sowing it to these dry bones. Amen. Amen. Let us stand as we conclude. <clears throat> Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you for this time. Lord, this week, let this week be our week, Lord. Father God, continue to guide us, continue to change us, Lord. Take us now from this place, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and thanks for viewing. Would you consider partnering with us with a financial contribution? We have three ways that you can give. Cash app dollar sign Kingdom Cathedral VA or you can go to our website www.kingdomcathedral.org and the third way you can write us Kingdom Cathedral 3820 Stone Shore Road Virginia Beach Virginia 23452